understand that the way our modern cultures are um, structured, that we don't live in villages and we are not, um, you know, living agricultural existences like we once were. So, um, you know, it's harder to kind of get thee to the moon lodge for three days and down tools, particularly for, you know, mothers um, that have children. So what I've um, developed is a kit, a free downloadable kit on my website, which is staroffishtar.com. And this kit uh, shows you how to structure a red tent circle for your closest girlfriends um, and family members that you can do in your lounge rooms, okay? And you just take it and turn once a month to meet at each other's homes. And in doing this, it ensures that you always have a circle of support in your life for the time each month when you are at your most emotionally vulnerable, so you're not around your partner, those of you in intimate relationships, because when we're in our shadow self, our wounded child, um, if we are around our partner at that time of the month, we often trigger each other and then it can take the rest of the month to sort it out. So to acknowledge that that's when we're at our most emotionally um, vulnerable, to go to a red tent circle means that by being around women who you really trust, and it might only be two other women, okay, without the legacy of sisterhood, um, you know, it's important that you only choose to sit in circle with women who you feel will not shame your vulnerability and will not shame you speaking your authentic truth by saying, you know, too much information. Because if we cannot do intimacy into me see with our sisters, we have no hope of doing it with our opposite, with our partners. So this is a very important preparatory groundwork for those wanting to have really harmonious and empowered interdependent relationships with their spouses. Um, and that's also true of people in same-sex relationships because we are all yin and yang. So we take it in turns to inhabit the masculine or the feminine, um, feminine masculine polarity um, at any given time within a relationship. And now as we are preparing um, for the shift in consciousness that is 2012 where many of us are um, actively becoming whole by healing the gender into which we've incarnated as our foundation gender and then um, getting to know and empower our opposite gender within so that we create a sacred union within and become whole and then we are ready for a relationship that is not two halves trying to find the other half to feel whole, but rather two whole beings coming together to form the mandala, uh, a symbol for sacred union. And the central point is the eye of the needle through which we heaven, uh, enter into the gates of heaven, which is a consciousness, not a place. Um, so it is important that we view red tents or moon lodges not as a separatist circle where women will go and bitch about their men folk um, but rather a place where women go to look at themselves to look at their own shadow and to get insight and support emotionally when they're at their most fragile rather than expecting their men folk to be able to be that for them because men and women are wired differently you know, the John Gray book, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, was a wonderful spearhead into this, you know, paradigm back in the 80s or early 90s. And um, the thinking is that, you know, women intuit what each other needs without having to think about it or second guess it. We know to get a woman a cup of tea. We know to... Um, you know, sit and listen. We know to give her the space to allow the tears to come up and not have to rush and in to try and fix that emotional state, but just hold a safe space 
and encourage her to breathe through whatever emotion is coming up knowing that it will cleanse her because tears work better than oil of ewe land to keep a woman young if we don't t if we don't cry we dry up if you want to stay young and juicy like a beautiful ripe fruit ladies you got to cry you got to allow yourself to feel vulnerable and again going to a beautiful red tent womb space is giving yourself permission to experience your vulnerability and in my experience teaching women's mysteries for 15 years when women cry including myself we we look beautiful okay it softens us often it'll change the color of our eyes so allow yourselves to cry um, I talked briefly before about the milestones that we encounter in our feminine journey. Um, the maiden is the first phase and so Manak or the puberty rite which is the welcoming to the red tent. Um, this is a legacy that um, we need as those of us who are already in our mother and wise woman phase to consider the legacy that we will leave behind, the legacy being um, what we have to show for our time on earth, how we want to be remembered, um, the seeds of wisdom that will carry on long after we leave this realm. And so creating a red tent circle um, with the women in your sphere of influence, your neighbours, your niece, your cousins, your granddaughters. Um, this is a way of giving the girls that follow in our footsteps what we never had. Yeah, we um, entered into a, a, a paradigm and a culture where women viewed each other competitively because they didn't have this legacy. Um, and so corporations have really, um, you know, done their, their best through marketing to play on that Achilles heel and um, in a sense make women feel even more vulnerable about their perceived imperfections and feel that they should compare themselves with other women and be in a headspace of competition. And this, this is to see yourself through the eyes of the rational mind, which is only 10% of your intelligence. Your soul, which is your 90% or your subconscious, when we see ourselves through that lens, um, we then see the beauty and the uniqueness of each and every woman. And we give each other permission to truly be our true essence and to celebrate the diversity of that which is um, in accordance with the Aquarian energy which is now anchoring on the planet now that we're stepping into the astrological age of Aquarius for the next 2,000 years. And this is the shift that is referred to in 2012. There is a lot of fear being propagated about this consciousness shift of 2012. Um, it is a time when we enter into more light on the planet, the light being the God force. And so uh, we accelerate our consciousness and we step into um, what's known as the fifth dimensional frequency, but that of our higher selves, but incarnate in form. So it's always the darkest before the dawn. So all of our shadow stuff is coming up at the moment. So it's even more important that we have a safe space where we can go to process this each month.